To whom much is given, much is required. Part of that requirement is sharing. Culture is the heartbeat within our lives, and it's at the core of so many things. While we live in a time when we are starving for wisdom, I welcome you to your wisdom retreat at Culture Raises Us. My brother, my brother, Laz Alonzo, welcome to the show, bro. I, Aster, what's going on, my brother? How you I'm doing, blessed, man? I'm blessed, highly favored, good to see you. Um, for those of you, I would just jump right in. Uh, for those of you who may not know uh, Laz, he's he's currently an amazing actor um, who you've seen in a number of different projects from uh, Avatar to Fast and Furious to This Christmas and most recently uh, in The Boys uh, on Amazon Prime, to name a few. And I'll let him go uh, into further depth about himself shortly. Um, but more than any of those things, um, he's a dear friend um, and beyond friend, he's a brother um, whose brotherhood I value tremendously and has been a major inspiration, I think, across multiple areas of my life. So if it's never been said or heard before, brother, I just want to let you know that off the rip. This is going to be an amazing combo that I'm looking forward to. And with all of our guests, uh, we always start off with this question. When you hear culture, what does that mean to you, bro? Um, that's a great, great way to open this up, man. Uh, culture to me, Aster is uh, constantly evolving. Yeah. It is not static. It is alive. Culture is a living, breathing uh, thing that we are all temporarily in charge of. Yeah. Well, right now, it is our turn to keep the culture alive, to shape it, to give it life, and to, and to define what it is for our generation, but it is not ours. It is just ours to shape right now. It was passed and handed down to us. And one day you and I and the rest of us of this generation will hand it to the next generation. Yeah. And there's always some lap, some overlap and some crossover, but culture is a way of expression. Culture is how human beings define who, what, when, and where they were at a particular point in time, the issues they were facing, their socioeconomic issues they were facing, their political issues they were facing, their style, their music, their flair, you know, how they communicated amongst each other, uh, how they dealt with problems, how they resolved them, or how they didn't resolve them. All of that is, is encapsulated in culture. And different periods of time, the culture is defined by different people of that time. And what I love about culture right now is that it's being defined by people that look like you and me. Mm -hmm. They call it pop culture, but it is much, much bigger than pop culture Next. because if you go to the Senate and if you go to politics, you know, you're going to see that we are also present and very vocal and influential. Um, if you look at uh, finances and you look at how many billionaires have come out of both hip hop, because hip hop is a very, very important piece of this culture, but also just in general in our lifetime, what we have seen, you know, I always remind people who tend to be Debbie Downers that 70 years ago, man, black people were still fighting listen, just to vote. Listen. We have to pat just just to vote. vote. We have to pat ourselves in the back for what we've achieved we to, based off of that within the period of time in which we have done it. Great point. Great right. point. And and have we arrived? Absolutely right. not. But we still have to be proud of our achievements, proud of our success, and proud of where we have come relative to the rest of society worldwide. Because I also always remind people that. Look at what African Americans have achieved in the U.S. compared from where we started in chattel slavery till today. Look at what African Americans have achieved and look at the rights and privileges that the African American sacrifice has afforded to every single person that's immigrated to this country. Because equal rights weren't given. They were fought Listen. for. They were earned through blood, sweat, and tears. And when you go back to who had to fight for those rights, 
It goes, it is a direct line yeah. all the way back to chattel slavery from Harriet Tubman to Rosa Parks to Martin Luther King to Malcolm X to everybody and still to the freedom fighters of this day. Bro. You know what I'm saying? So we have so much. And when I say we, I'm talking a diaspora. Absolutely. I'm Absolutely. talking. We're not monolithic. We're not monolithic. Absolutely. But, 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 but black people of every single creed and race what well, uh, uh, ethnicity rather still has to if you have immigrated to the united states you still have to thank african americans for the sacrifice that they made yeah. and i remind people of this i remind latins of this too the freedoms that you experience when you come to this country are here and are available to you because black people fought for them and this needs to be taught oh. you know where this needs to be taught I know I came in on a pool. Listen, on a, you on came a in so on fire. I'm, I'm, I, I'm shooting I, listen, my, my AK-47. I, lo it's listen, all, it's I love every bit of this. And you know why? I look at the fact that, you know, this De La Soul, you know, catalog has just been made available now on streaming platforms, right? And everybody's, um, you, you can't, I can't even fathom the fact that we haven't been able to listen to it um, to date, but now it is. And one of the songs and albums, the stakes is high. And the stakes, stakes is high. the stakes are high. And you came in with an energy that matches the gravity of this. But more importantly, Cubano. Let me, let me finish, yeah, let me please, finish please, my please, one please point. You know, and I'm going to talk. This no, is no, your show. No, no, this no, is your listen, show. I'm listen, a, no, no. You, you, right where you're supposed to be. Go. All I want to say is, is that I believe that in the citizenship class, that every single immigrant that steps onto this country they have to go through a class in order to get citizen, in order to get U.S. Shit, citizenship. Yep. And part of what that should be that is not being taught is what black people did and the civil rights movement and what black people had to go through in order for them to get the rights that they get when they come to this country. Oh. Because if every single immigrant knew what black people sacrificed for them too, not just black people, then because black people kick the door open, but a lot more people walk through that door than just black people, than just African Americans. And and if they were taught this in their citizenship class, I bet you the relationship between La the Latino community and the African American community would be different. The relationship between the Asian community and the Latino Amer and the African American community would be different. The uh 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 Islamic anybody that immigrates to the United States. Mm -hmm should look at African-Americans differently. And the reason why they're not is because they're not being taught that the only reason why the U.S. is the land of opportunity is because that opportunity was fought for and bled for by African-Americans. All right, I'm off this, my soapbox. No, because no, this, this whole session is going to be a soapbox session. Um, and you... <laughs> That's why you got me on here, huh? You, you, said, you, I said, you sound like an HBCU grad, bro. Let me find out. Me fire <laughs> but look... Home. Howard University, brother. Look, Howard I'm University. I'm already going you know. into that. Look, all this is just teeing things up, but the way you've teed up this conversation, you've added another dimension to it. And I think it's the acknowledgement of what has been done by a people for a many people. And if we realize right. that, I think the fact that we'd be able to lock arms a lot more seamlessly to now take on this next chapter of how we're going to galvanize around how we move forward collectively this is going to be a teachable moment in this episode. This is the tool. You know, the learnings, people learn from different places now. Traditionally, it was school, things to that degree. We know there are so many different outlets to learn and be informed and educated, and this is going to be one of them. So I thank you for all this energy. You keep this thing going in this, in this episode and beyond this episode, which I don't need to say that to you because you live this, and that's why I knew it was imperative to have you on, and I love you for this from the top of this session to the bottom, and then we when we close it out, um, because I know this is who you are. This is in your DNA. A and with that, I think that's a great segue into giving the people a little bit more insight into who you are. Cubano, my guy, tell them a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, I'm a first generation uh, American. Um, I'm the first uh, American born in my family. My family immigrated Cuba. from Cuba to the United States. Uh, they came with nothing. They didn't speak the language. Um, and they came here to give me an opportunity that they didn't have had they stayed in Cuba. 
You know, Cuba is under a political dictatorship. Um, it is affecting the black people of Cuba more than anyone, but everyone is is suffering in Cuba. One person doesn't suffer more than the other in, in general. Um, people who have family here who send them goods obviously tend to have a, a, a slightly better experience because they have the funds to, to purchase more things, but everybody is suffering under this dictatorship. You know, so... Uh, for me, it's always been extremely important to uh, champion the Afro-Latino uh, because we are invisible in a lot of ways in the Latin community. Um, we, uh, If you turn on a lot of the Latin stations and, and Latin media, you're not going to see many people that are our complexion. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, you haven't met my mom. Have no, you all her? these years, I, I feel like I know her because you that's who you constantly talk about, who you constantly spend a ton of time with. All right. Well, I have a relationship with my mom very similar to you with your mom. We're best friends. Yep. Um, but my mom is your complexion. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? My mom uh, looks very similar to your mm -hmm. mom. You know what I'm saying? And so, uh, and your mom is Jamaican. Absolutely. Yeah, Jamaican. So you're Jamaican American. Mm -hmm. You know, so we are part of this diaspora, you know, of, of first generation uh, uh, black folks born here in the U.S., but our parents were immigrants. You know, and so we share a lot of the different um, uh, values that are both shared and some that are different. Um, and for me, it's always been uh, important to champion uh, uh, Afro Latinos because, especially in my business, you know, we're just not very well represented. Mm -hmm. You know, and now we're starting to see a lot more of us move to the forefront of Hollywood and 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 start shining a little more. Um, and, uh, and 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 it's because of a collective effort where we have all kind of been kicking the door down. And culture has also assisted that. Back. You know, the, the cult the movement of our of our generation right now has made people step back and say, hmm, what have I not been Man. doing? You know, I've had that conversation, you know, with executives, white executives, Man. you know, at different studios and and different uh, networks that. 10 years ago, I never had these conversations. Mm, so that's progress. You know, and that's that's progress because the culture right now is demanding those conversations be had. And people are seeing themselves in the mirror and saying, man, at one time, being racist, not being racist was enough. Ben. But now you got to take it a step further. It ain't enough of just not being that's racist. Right. It's what can I do to... I, I, am I am I experiencing a certain level of am, am I ignoring that there is a disconnect Look, here? There is a mismatch here. And how am I contributing right. to it? Am I contributing to it by just seeing it and well, it ain't affecting me. I'm gonna just keep doing what I do. You know, so people are becoming a lot more aware of where they stand and how they've contributed to the situation and how they can possibly yep. change. No, I love that. And you know, as I'm listening to you, I, I've had the pleasure to know you for over 25 plus years, right? And yes. in the early part of our friendship, I noticed a very, very, very distinct um, quality with you. And it was this ability to manifest your goals and opportunities, bro. It was a superpower that I was completely in on and I had never seen it before from a person. And it, it started from you telling me, this part you told me from when you graduated from Howard, and you were saying to yourself, you want to work on Wall Street, which is something that wasn't common, wasn't seen. So you didn't have a bunch of examples, but you said that's what you wanted to do. And you did that. To so then telling yourself, you know what? I want to work for Nike. And you did that. To so then, which I did see and, 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 and watched you do, saying that you wanted to act. And guess what? Yet again, you did that. So for me, you are the example of the culture of manifestation and the discipline behind putting words and energy into the universe with action and commitment and faith. Um, and with that, anything truly is possible. And I've been able to see this in you, right? So this superpower definitely comes from some sort of seed. We, we love to talk about seeds in this show and use that analogy that you must have watered on a consistent basis or muscle that you had to exercise in the figurative sense to build this culture. What what can you share about what that is? 
What is that in you, bro? Um, well, thank you very much, first of all. And I, I would be uh, remiss if I didn't say that I see the same thing yeah. in you and have seen the same thing in you, not just with your determination and your perseverance, but your accomplishment. Oh, thank you, Brett. Because everything I've seen you say you were going to do, you have accomplished yeah. on a very, very high level. Yeah. On a very high level. Uh, my accomplishments, because I'm in front of the camera, might be more visible. But those that know, if you know, you know, those that know, know who you are and how you've contributed to the culture. Oh, thank you. You know, so uh, uh, it, it's funny because, you know, in, in, in our, the industry, right? The entertainment industry, we'll just call it that. There are so-called celebrities, mm -hmm. but then there are celebrities, two celebrities. Ah, okay. You know what I'm saying? And I bet you your Rolodex is deeper than mine. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because you are a celebrity's celebrity. You can get on the phone right now and probably call anybody in the music, Hollywood, whatever, produce, from producers to actors to musicians, and not only will they return your call, they'll answer your call, they'll answer your FaceTime, like, on, on the first rank. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I just say that to say that thank you for, for my flowers, but I want to give you your flowers Man, too, because you, if you know, you know, and 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 you are you you have well earned you have earned thank them. you, brother. You have well thank earned you, brother. a few times over. Um, now, when it comes to myself, um, you know, I, I think that being raised in a single parent home, man, you just don't feel like you have the option of <laughs> failure. You know, failure was never a consideration in, I, in my in my vocabulary or in my thought process because. We just didn't have, we didn't have that we luxury. We didn't have the luxury. Failure is a, lu a luxury, bro. Failure is a luxury. We didn't have yeah. that. You know, you either had to win because if you lost, it was, it was detrimental. It wasn't just, I wouldn't be the only one that's losing. It's my mom who's losing. It's yeah. my aunts who put everybody, my whole family, even my grandmother, you know, everybody put into the pot to send me to school. You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of people that are losing if yeah. I lose. So I didn't have that option. I had to figure it out and I had to win. That doesn't mean that I won every single battle. That's right. But I but I've been winning every single war. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it just came from with every no, I find another way around that no. And sometimes it was a no for now. And it wasn't until months or years later that I understood that that no was actually a blessing for a bigger yes. I'll give you an example. Um, I, my first opportunity in Hollywood to be on a TV show as a series regular, you know, I moved to LA from New York and I was doing little jobs here and there. I had some money saved up. Um, but it was, it was rough, man. My, th that first few years in LA was rough trying to, to, you know, put my flag down and let people know, like, I'm really about this thing. And so I finally got an opportunity. Uh, my man, Benny Richburg who's now one of my producing partners for my, for my production company. Um, at the time, he was uh, consulting on a show called One on One, Flex Alexander. Uh, and he wrote in a, a Cuban, a black Cuban character. You know, and so uh, obviously he wrote it for me. Um, I still had to audition against everybody else who was uh, uh, trying to get the role. I got the role. Um, shout out to Flex. You know, we had to do a chemistry read and he was very supportive. Yunetta Boom, may she rest in peace. You know, they were people who at the time, you know, were running the whole half hour business uh, at UPN. And so uh, it, the, the, the little part, I was in the little portion of the show that was a barbershop. And it was so popular that they did a spinoff. That's how funny that barbershop portion was. Well, guess what happened? We shot the pilot to the spinoff. Now I was funny enough to get the show to get this show from a little clip to a pilot to on the air, but then when it was time for them to contract everybody on to see who was going to be the series regulars, UPN said they didn't understand. They didn't get my character. Is he black or is he Man. black? He can't be both. It's like, well, yeah, he's Absolutely. a yeah, black they human. They were like, yeah. right. But 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 that's not possible. How could he be black and Cuban? Like, hello, I'm right here. You know what I'm saying? Like, pitch right. me. So so yeah, man, they didn't get it. And 
everybody that shot the pilot ended up being series regulars except me. I got left out. Wow. That hurt. That hurt. Because when we shot the pilot, Astrid, I wish you would have been in the audience. I got so many laughs, bro. Thing. I got so many. Because back then we used to shoot a half hour shot in front of a studio that's right, audience. That's right. Live studio. What you on? And you remember in New York, I got my chops doing theater that's in right, New York. That's right. That's right. Well, I was for our set. When studio audiences, man, I ate that up. I love performing in mm -hmm. front of people. Well, I killed the pilot. But when it was time to go to series, they didn't pick me up because the executives did not get it. Fifth. Guess what happened three months later? I got hired by, no, before I go to the, I got hired by. Three months later, a breakdown comes out. Cause you know, I'm always mm -hmm. hustling. I used to get the breakdowns. I didn't wait for my agent to tell me what was going on out there. I would check the breakdowns every day and then call my agent and be like, are you yo, on this? there's this, you on this? Yeah. yeah, are you on this? I need to go out for this, 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 and this. I was a, I considered them partners, not, you know, That's agents. Right. We worked That's together. Right. And so uh, I wake up, Aster, and I turn on my computer, and I check the breakdowns, bro. And there's this movie that's cast, feature film, directed by Sam Mendes, who just got the Oscar Man. for, I don't, I don't even remember the movie that he did with Tom Hanks, I think. Oscar-winning director, starring Jake Gyllenhaal, Jamie Foxx, you know, who that's the year he won the that's Oscar right, for, Ray, Ray. for Ray. That's right. And and guess what the breakdown said for my character, uh, uh, Ramon Escobar, looking for a black human. Look at this. Is that Look God? That. No, all the way. Thank you. Make it very clear what it is. Make it And listen, your story is such a perfect example of when one door closes, do you know the doors that he's about to open for you, even on the things that you believe are the no-brainer? You thought it was the no-brainer yeah. for you to be in the cast that you were so engaging in, had everybody feeling amazing, laughing, all the things, showing them that, no, I really am what you are saying you want as a character. It's a real thing. And they still didn't believe it, still didn't fit, or didn't work out. They blessed, they blessed, they blessed you, me. bro. Wouldn't have been available to do that movie had I been on that, that show. That part, and I love that you. And that movie, that movie opened up my film career because yeah. from there I was on fire. Yeah. I booked everything I went out Man. for. I did Fast and Furious. I did Dude, Avatar. You were on a run, bro. You were on a run. Christmas, <laughs> oh yeah, I, I did this Christmas. I, I mean, I was I was killing everything. Uh, I mean, it was it was it was insane, you know. And and the same thing happened again. Uh, yeah. I booked this show on ABC. Man. They picked up every single character from the show on ABC except mine because I was part of this little part of the show that was a law firm. And they said, all right, we're going to write off the law firm and we're just going to focus on the family. Man. Three months later, I booked that. So, but you know what's so beautiful about this? And, and I'm, I'm hoping you could share this part. Given that this is now the second time you're coming in a similar scenario, your approach and your thought process had to have shifted significantly because God had already shown you. 100%. God had already shown you. 100%. First time, what's possible. So now you're going from a, this is happening to me, but it's actually happening for me. For me. So what, when it happened the second time, Aster, I smiled. Yes, yes. In adversity. It's so, I was like, okay, where's the blessing coming? What movie am I about Listen. to book? That's how, that was my attitude. I was like, oh, something big but is coming. Look at because this already happened. That before. is the choice, the choice you made to shift your mindset. And that energy shift yep. gets put into the universe for God to do his miracle work because we serve a miracle God. We don't hope we don't hope for miracles. We depend on them. And he shown you. No. Wow. Yes. Bro, I didn't even know the nuances of these stories as I was next to you during this journey. Right. But you know, you can't share. Yes, you you can't share when you go to these auditions and you do like I know for Bobby, like she can't talk about who she's auditioning for, what the response was. Da, 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 da. So to hear you say it this way and the way in which you went through it and your 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 your, your POV shift, your mind shift when the next scenario came up, because all these things are experiences. Look, life is 10 percent things that happen to you, but 90 percent how you respond to it 100%, bro. and you're responding yep. to it is a magnificent lesson for all 
to really walk away with. And so when I talk about this art of manifestation, obviously it doesn't come without distractions, hurdles, adversities, what people might think are losses. So what do you do, and you said a little bit of it, to stay locked in to that vision and that end goal, even with all these adversities or no's or closed doors? Well, listen, man, um, the, the more you get, the bigger the challenges become. Mm. That I will yes, say. Man. Adversity is never easy. Uh, the the challenges never become small. Mm. Uh, so I can't sit up here and say and lie and say that the adversities that I face don't rock me sometimes. Yes, I've been rocked. Yes, sir. I've been rocked. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, have I stayed down? No. No. And I don't intend mm. to. So, you know, I, I don't live a life of not expecting to get rocked. Life just will rock you every now yes, and then. Did. You know, what I focus on is, whew, okay, that, that rocked yes, me. Now, what can I do? What's within my power to do? To, to move forward beyond this. What can I do? And, and, and I'll exhaust every resource. Because again, failure is not an yeah. option. I don't what? have that luxury. I don't have anybody that I can call. I, never, I mean, I never really had, besides the love and support that a family gives mm -hmm. you. You know, and at the end of the day, you realize that's all we really got, man. Yeah. That's all we have, man, is family. Material things get that's old. That's right, that's right. They, we get over them. They don't mean the same thing that they did when they were shiny and brand mm -hmm. new. But the one thing that we always have is our family. But besides that, I never had the luxury of having like an older brother that I could call and say, yo, man, can you spot me 10 mm -hmm. grand? Yo, can you send me 30 grand? I'm going to buy. You know what I'm saying? What I do have, and this part, I'm eternally grateful, is good friendships. Mm -hmm. I have friendships that in many ways I have heard people describe their relationships with brothers and sisters. And the friends that I have been blessed with are tighter right. and more committed That's to right. me than, than some blood relationships are. Man. And that part I feel blessed, man, man. eternally blessed, you know, because when you grow up not having a, a, a brother or a sister or somebody to, to lean on, you learn how to navigate life pretty well Absolutely. on your own. And not bother people and not ask for favors and not ask for help. I'm going to just figure yes, it out. Yes. That ain't always good. That ain't always... Sometimes you need to lean that's on right. people. And that's one, of the, that's one of the learnings that I still am learning to do is learning how to ask for Man. help. Learning how to reach out. Man. Man. Learning how to open up and talk to, about my problems. Yeah, you know what? It's funny you, know? you mentioned that. I, I felt that on your spirit to be completely transparent um, a couple of weeks ago when we spoke. Um, we were going back and forth on text. And you just, you know, mentioned, yeah, I just got a lot going on. And, but I felt a weight. I felt a weight. Um, and, I, and I feel like you're working through your process of sharing your weights. Because this thing called life is not meant to do on your own. That would Right. It, like for none right. of us and we're all here for each other and i think you mentioned another amazing thing of you know we're not meant to be broken we're meant to bend we do a lot of bending when we go through this adversity and, and you're and these challenges and these um different scenarios that get positioned in front of us and the beauty is we're never meant to break we're only meant to bend and the beauty of that also is that you then become an example for somebody else to lessen their bend. Right. And the other thing right. that I'm so proud, um, and it hurt, it, it just touched my soul when you talk about look at God, right? Um, and you know the 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 presence um, that is there from God in this whole journey. And so I, I, I correlate that to your faith in all this, right? On your daily journey and your journey in general. And how important is that 
as you take on the things that you manifest and the visions that you manifest is the faith piece. Man, I'm going to tell you, bro, um, I can't live without my faith. <laughs> I can't live without it. I, I would not be here without it because it is more fuel than anything else I have in my life. <laughs> it is literally the core of who I am. And I, I don't run from my faith. I embrace it proudly because I believe that faith is the seed for miracles to happen. You know, miracles will not happen without intention. <laughs> and intention cannot exist without faith and belief. You have to believe that what you are doing will manifest. And then everything that you do, every little tiny stone that you put down, that's the, that, that is the, the intention that you are doing is for the, the manifestation. What you're doing right now is the beginning. This podcast that you're building is the beginning. These are the foundational bricks Next. to a very, very large building. But it only happens one brick and at a time. If you try to skip a step and get a, a, a manufactured brick, you know, some, some fake, you, you got to lay the foundation. That's right. that's right. You know, and that's what you're doing right now. You are laying the foundation to a much bigger property, a much bigger enterprise. And I haven't talked to you about your future goals of this podcast and, and the brand that you're building and the whole culture movement that you're building. But I already know, because I know you. You know what I'm saying? I already know from merchandise to TV to shows to everything, but you're not too proud to start at the very, very fundamentals and at, at the very, very bottom. And, and when I say the bottom, I don't mean the bottom meaning uh, low quality. I mean bottom meaning you are willing to get down and put every brick down yourself. Because you know that what you're building you have the intention of seeing of seeing it go to where you see it in your mind. Yeah, yeah. And that's faith. And you, yeah. That's belief. That's intention. No, I love that. And it only exists, it only exists in your mind's eye because God put it that's there. That's right. That's right. You know what I'm saying? You know, we we don't create nothing, man. We're just antennas. We're vessels. We're vessels, bro. We're vessels. And you either you either get the signal. And then a lot of people get signals, but a lot of people don't do something about mm. it. They get the signal and they and then it goes. And there's another and there's another person that got the same signal that you got, but they're doing something about it. Well, you got this signal and you're <laughs> doing something about it. Signal didn't get to you by no, accident. No, not at all. Not at all. And you talk about signal for me was to be an actor. It didn't get to me by accident. Yep. I wouldn't be here if it was an accident, if it was a mistake. It wasn't a mistake. And when I spoke to you about it 25 years ago, I was as confident about my Facts. skills of getting here as I am now. Facts. Rightfully so. Facts. And now I'm building my production that's right. company. Yeah. I'm on the phone every day with studios, pitching ideas, pitching movies, pitching undocumented stuff, pitching um, uh, documentaries. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm 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 working a whole different side of my brain that I don't work when I'm on camera. This is this That's is right. business. That's right. This is the business side of the entertainment business. I entertain you, but now I want to also do business. That's right. That's right. And and you have all the tools and you've laid down the foundation. So that's why this is a seamless, very organic transition for you. Um and I'm excited to see where this goes because once again have seen your superpower in work. Thank you, man. I, 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 and it, it's one of the most inspiring things. And I love that you continue to evolve and you continue to trust his plan in pushing you into places of uncomfort to get comfortable with it. Because Absolutely. that's where the growth comes. So that's so dope. You know, w within all the industries uh, you've worked within over the years, was there ever a particular moment where you realized just how big and instrumental this entertainment culture was to the overall culture that we know today? Um, like a I'm moment or a thing. I'm sorry? 
just like a moment or was there a moment of things? You know, Astro, I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you, man. I was so 100% a part of it, a part of building it, that I never looked beyond uh, myself and at what we were building. I never looked man. at what we were building. I was just a part of it because there were, there were so many little tiny steps that I have lived in order to get to where I am today. You know, I mean, you mentioned Nike. You know, I, I spent a good amount of time at Nike, but the people that I met and the skills that I achieved and the the what I learned, you know, the the first thing that I learned at Nike was that I didn't want to stay there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I don't see that as a diss to Nike. There was some no, of, no, no. It was some of the most fun years I had in my life. It was such oh, a crazy, fun gig and job. But when Nike tapped me on the shoulder and said, we want you to go to Portland now, it's time for you to step up because we like right. you. We believe right. in you. You're talented. We think that you can really go high in this company. Right. And it starts with this promotion we want to give you. And then I had to think, I was like, if I leave New York and I stop acting, if I go to Portland, that's it. My, my acting career is done. It's night night. It's complete night night. Because that's gonna it's be at night. least twenty four months out of my life, two years minimum, that I'm completely out of the mix. I'm not auditioning anymore. That's right. I'm not doing plays. I'm not doing little day player roles. And so I had to decide. I was like, do I take this opportunity, which is gonna pay me more money, which is gonna be fun? You know, it was like it was when Drew Greer was moving that's on right. to Force Classics. That's right. That's right. And they were they were bringing me on. They were grooming me to take his position once he was getting right. promoted to to be in charge of all the hot, you know, uh, uh redesign of all those sport classic shoes, Absolutely. the Air Maxes, to you know, to the dunks, to all that. And I and you right. know, I, I I love kicks. I'm I'm a fiend. You know, so I was gonna bring my pizzazz, my you know, you used to call me Hollywood back in the day. I was gonna bring all that right. to the table, but but, um, and you know what? You calling me Hollywood back in the day, bruh, that was supported. That How about was that? Support. I like that nickname. That's right. I like, because it was like, it was part of the manifestation. I believe right. that nickname. When you call one, me one Hollywood, every time you saw me, you'd be like, Hollywood. Ever since I told you I wanted to be an actor, my, name, my nickname became Hollywood. And all your boys started calling me Hollywood. That's right. That's and right. Hollywood could be, and and then the, the funny thing is, is Hollywood could be derogatory if it came from it a bad been. place. That's right. That's I right. I knew it came from love with you, and uh, I felt it. I felt encouraged right. by that, man, and I man. embraced it. I fuck yeah, I'm Hollywood. Hollywood. And we created that energy, and we, we created, created every that bit of that energy. energy. Bro. We created that energy, and I was Hollywood before I was in Hollywood because I felt, it. I believed it. Damn. What I'm saying is, is I had to make a decision. And when I decided, you know what? I looked at Drew and then I looked at all the other people that were at Nike. And I said, would I be OK with letting go of my acting aspirations to be where they are in the next five or 10 years? And I said, nah, that's not that. It, it works that's for your journey. That's not my journey. That's not my heart mm. isn't there. That's my heart right. is that's now right. I'm having a good time, but I got other places to be. Mm. And so I had to I had to walk away. I had to walk away from a, from an op amazing opportunity and I had to walk away from the company because at that point it's like, well, if you're not going to move up, you can't keep doing this job forever. That's you know right. what I'm saying? Right. And so I had to I had to respectfully walk away and allow somebody else to step in that position and go on my own and keep mm. and keep gambling on me. Mm. And I gambled bet on, on me. I bet on me. I went to Pasad Brothers. You know what I'm saying? And we built a great marketing company. We Absolutely. were doing the hottest events in the whole world, not just country, but world, because we were in the islands. We were in Europe. We were doing events all over the world with Tangeray and Remy Martin. We started mm -hmm. the whole liquor mar marketing game. I, I remember. I remember. I that never was forget. Us. That was, yeah, I never forget going to Essence. And this was probably the first time that I went to Essence. And you had just left Nike and you were like, hey, come down to Essence. We're taking over the whole joint. And I just remember you on top of like trucks promoting 
the Hummers. Yeah, we had, we had a Hummers. team of Hummers. That's that's right. That's right. The Hummers. So we again, had a team of Hummers. They would Tangeray down. We had the Tangeray girls on every Hummer. They all had systems in them. We were passing out free bottles, free drinks. We had Bourbon Street on fire. Fire. Yeah. But and, and as, that, as you look back, it's so easy to see how again he was positioning you in all these different things and preparing you, right? Because even with yep. the Nike gig, we had to present all the time. So all you time. had to have the charisma, the energy that you have to present, to be able to um, pour into these sales associates all the different technical aspects of the product, right? That then you go into the Prasad Brothers and promoting and trying to move these different liquor brands at all these different cultural moments. All of these things were steps to prepare you. They were building what you call that foundation, bro. Yeah. Shout out to Keenan, my boy Keenan Towns. Keenan you know Nubo, yes, Keenan you Nubo. Know, got me over to Prasad Brothers. And, you know, that that gave me another opportunity to do what I, something that I was good at while I was still able to pursue my That's acting. right. That's right. You know, That's and beautiful. then it finally came to a moment at Prasad Brothers where I had to say, it's time to go to L.A. Mm-hmm. You know, I've, I have been in New York long enough and... I've been in enough plays. I've done enough little movie roles, but all the big stuff was happening in LA. Mm-hmm. You know, like the stuff they were casting New York for, if you weren't a big name actor already, you weren't getting any big opportunities. You were just getting like a little day player role here and there or whatever. But the big roles were casted out of LA. You had to be there in right. person. It wasn't none in of this. Person. Yeah, yes. none of this like yes. mail tape in or, you know, tape, yeah. self tape. That didn't exist back then. You had to be in the room in person. And so I finally had to make that decision, let go of another opportunity that was paying me very well and a yeah, job man. that was fun and I was having a time of my life and I was enjoying and I was adding to the culture. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we were Rare doing voice. deals with FUBU, with ESCO, with Nas, with all these clothing brands. But at the same time that we were working with hip hop, we were also working with Procter & Gamble, you know, and and and, and corporate America. Yeah, you man. know, and four presentations at, at uh, 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 well, now it's LVMH, but back then it was um, Shefflin and Somerset, you know, who had That's all right. these different brands and all this stuff. But, you know, I just say that to say that I always kept my eyes on the prize. That's right. And every moment in my life where I had an opportunity to st- stop for a second, to survive while I'm pursuing my acting, they were all moments that added to the culture. Man. Uh, we we were bro. We we were doing some of the biggest events in New York City. At no one facts, point. facts, facts. It was and, insane. No, it was so insane. It, it, it was this, the streets were literally on fire. And, Told and you when the we was in L.A. Yeah, put yeah. it down. And, and God rest, God rest the, the the dead. You know, uh, uh, it was our party. And I'm not saying this in a braggadocious way, but it was our party. You know, where unfortunately uh, B.I.G. was shot. We sponsored yeah. that during Soul Train. Yeah. You know, and that was a, a, a horrible moment. You yeah. Know? But it was it was still a moment that happened in our culture. That's we right. Were there, we were present. Prominent moment. Prominent moment. Prominent me and moment. Kenan, me and Keenan were leaving the party. We were in the garage when we heard the shots fired. And we didn't know who had wow. gotten hit. Nobody knew who had gotten hit. We just heard the shots fired. Yes. And it wasn't until we went to the next club, you know, because you know how it was, man. It was party after party after party after That's party. Right. We went to the next club, and on our way in, the brat was coming out hysterically crying and going crazy. He's been shot. He's been shot. He's been shot. We were like, who's who's been shot? We, did, we still didn't know. How about that? And that's when we found out it was big. Man. You know, so... It's it's so many moments in in history that I've lived through and 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 being a part of the culture, uh, uh, that that raised us. That's right. That's you right. Know? No facts. Before before facts. I got to being on camera and being known for my on camera, you know, and, and I'm not even I haven't even talked about the BET day. That, that's right. Where you were hosting on BET. That's right. In LA AM at BET. You know, I did a stand at BET. That's you right. Know, again, That's right. Of culture, you know. Yeah, so, and it's, it just it just made it just shows the credibility of you, um, as it pertains to what we call cultivators, right? 
this this show is about highlighting the stories and the moments that cultivators have been a significant part of in shaping what we now call culture or the different cultures that we dissect and talk about. And you are by no means any different from any of the other cultivators, right? You have actually, you were spot on with all the different chapters of, of how you've contributed to it in a very authentic fashion. And this is no different now that you're doing it in the space of in front of the camera, and now you're going to start doing it where? Behind the camera as well. So it, it's it's just a constant evolution. And and when you talk about how the culture of manifestation has benefited you for, for sure and inspired those around you, like myself, how important is it that we ask ourselves not, what can I do for my own advancement, but rather, what can we do to advance together? Because that's, that's the real, that's the magic, that's, that's the secret sauce right there, the together thing. Well, I will say this. Uh, today's uh, young um, generation, I'm just calling it generation, uh, millennials, Generation Y, they get a lot of flack. But one thing I will say about them that they do extremely well is they they work together. Mm. My generation, you were always looking up. Who's ahead? That's right. That's right. You know, who's ahead? How'd they do it? How'd they figure it out? What did they build? How'd they build it? Let me figure out how to build it similarly. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, I looked up to Denzel, looked up to Lawrence Fishburne, looked up to Samuel L. Jackson. And, you know, all that generation, Wesley Snipes, that generation ahead of me that, you know, were, were, my, were my role models. Looked uh -huh. up to the Spike Lees, people that I wanted to work with. This generation, I believe what they've done is they've mastered how to work together. Mm. And how to, how to, they, they're not looking up. They're looking to the That's left. Right. right. Who are my peers? Right. That's right. And how can we build something together? And, and, and I feel like, I'm learning from them in that aspect. That you Man. don't always have to network up. You can network out and yeah. win. Um, you and I are from a very, very uh, successful generation, Aster. You know, there are so many cats that we know from back in the day who have come up, who we came up with and are now successful. And I include us in that conversation. In, yeah. But... We are very, very privileged in the fact that when we network out, we're networking with fellow successful brothers and sisters mm -hmm. that work in. Mm -hmm. but, but but I do admire today's generation and how they are they are making it happen and how they're doing. Agreed. You know, I don't see a lot of the competition. Um, I was watching. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm a big. I, I'm a huge friend and fan of Van Lathan. Ahead. His podcast, and he interviewed Wood Harris recently. Wood, dope, dope actor. I've always loved yeah. Wood Harris and his brother. You know, oh, Wood and Steve. So, so you know, we grew up playing ball together. So they used to come to the Y, where you used to try to come and lay it up, picking it up. Don't think I wasn't gonna bring this up. Laz is the worst basketball player ever, ladies and gentlemen. However, he will have you thinking he is the best because in That's his effort. heart, in his heart. He wants to be the best ball player ever. Ever. He is horrendously bad. So yes, let me bring oh, wait, it back oh, wait, to oh, wait. My D though. My defense is is I'm I'm Dennis Rodman on them boards. Okay. If that's what you want to hold on to, I'm I'll let get you do you. that. Listen, I got, I got one trick. I'm a one trick pony on the basketball court. Yeah. I'm gonna get you some boards. Okay, get some what you are. You and are ain't nobody gonna stop me. No. It's me no. and that ball. I focus on that ball. Stay less. And then I give Stay it less. away. After, after I get that ball, what yes. you do with it, Aster, you need to yes. make sure you score. But I'm gonna and get that's what I do. Say less. I'm going to get less. that rock. Ain't no elbows. <laughs> ain't no knees going to stop me. I'm going to get no. down and dirty in the paint. That, yeah, no, it, it's the best. I that's love your passion around basketball. basketball. It don't matter. It's going down. Because I understand, listen, I, one thing that I've always said, Aster, is we don't need yes men in our camp. Man. You know, we need no men. We need somebody that's going to keep it real with you and tell you, you know, what you shouldn't be doing. That's you right. You want to rethink that. You know, last time you tried that, this is what happened. And it's not having Debbie Downers or negative people. It's people no. grounded. 
Absolutely. You've always kept me grounded when it came to my basketball skills. <laughs> I could not let you do that because guess what, bro? That would have taken a lot away from your credibility, man. Uh-huh. Had you gone out in the real world thinking you were that guy and then people right. really took you up on it, bro, right. I would feel bad as your brother right? if I didn't say something and then you went out there and they were like, yo, do you see this dude? Right. So, 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 so you saved me a lot of embarrassing moments because I always went in saying, telling people like, listen, this is my job. If you want me to play on your squad, I got one job. Rebound. Right. Rebounding. That's Offensive. It. Defensive, I'm gonna get you some boards. There you go. There you go. So, so sorry, back to Wood. I took, you away. I took you away from the Wood story. Wood was Wood was on so an interview. Wood said, so Wood Wood said um that our generation, and that, I, I consider myself part of his generation because even though yep. he was doing it way before I started, he was one of my inspirations. Yeah. You know, but he said, you know, our generation was very competitive. And that's true. It was a very it was a bravado, it was a competition. It was get out of my way. I'm a win. I'm That's that right. guy. I'm that dude. I'm the best. Ain't nobody gonna beat me here. The new generation, they don't necessarily have that attitude, man. They yes, have man. this we gonna win attitude. And I respect that. I yes, like man. that. You know what I'm saying? Yes, and, and, and and although I had to participate in the I'm gonna win generation, that's not the attitude that I share with the next generation. When they come up and they tell me, hey, man, you know, I grew up watching you. I like your stuff, man. You a beast. Right. Actor. You know, you have any advice? You have any tips? Like, I'll give tips and I'll give advice, you know, and I'll genuinely hear them where they're at. And if I have a nugget to share, I'll give it to them. Sometimes, you know, you don't always have a nugget to share. It's just about right. listening and encouragement. But That's sometimes right. you do have a nugget to share if they want to receive it. Not everybody wants to receive it, but if they do yep. want to receive it, you know, I don't mind sharing it because no. And and again, I I can speak to that because you've done that for Bobby. You know, when Bobby Absolutely. first started on her journey, I remember we were out there for an audition, and I think she had already heard that she didn't get it or something. I was like, Hey, Cubano, I need you to come through and just talk some words into her. And you came to my mom's crib. You sat on the couch with her. And you talked her through the industry. And I'll never forget, I think you were probably one of the first people to help her understand that she's going to get way more no's than she's going to get yeses. And that it's not a reflection of who she is, but more so a reflection of a fit and what so what 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 have you regarding the opportunity, all right? The PS that they're looking for and all the crap. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You so you are literally an example of what you just said, right? I've seen you do it and I know you're gonna to continue to do it because that's in your DNA and you also know that's part of your gift is that you're supposed to be sharing. You have to share because none of this, like you said so well in the beginning, none of this is ours. Right. We're just temporary holders of these these gifts and these these resources and these opportunities. And um, that is part of the culture as well, man. We are supposed to, we are obligated to support each other. It was my yeah. job to speak to Bobby. Mm-hmm. And it was no accident that I happened to be in New York when you and your daughter were in New that's York. That's right. It was no that's accident. Right. You're right. That's right. Because you were living in L.A. That, that's I was right. living in L.A. It just so happened I was in New York at that moment. We were both yep. in New York at that moment. That's and, right. You're and, right. She, and she received it. And look at you how sure well uh, Bobby, your daughter, look at yeah. how well she's done. I mean, mm-hmm. she's done stuff I haven't done. You know? Have you been on Broadway yet? I haven't been on Broadway. I've been on off Broadway, but I haven't been on Broadway. Wow! So we don't manifest that. She has accomplished things that even I haven't accomplished, and that is that is culture, bro. That yeah. is how that is how we pour into each other, and pouring into somebody doesn't mean that you lose anything. No, thank you. Speak on that. Adding, it is just adding. Let me ask you this, man: Are, are you inspired by anybody outside of the industry? You you talk about. You know, the spikes, you talk about the Denzels, rightfully so, but outside of the industry, are you inspired by anybody? I'm inspired by so many people, Aster. Uh, I'm inspired by anyone that uh, is authentic, is authentic. And that can be from podcasts, that Mm -hmm. can be from uh, political activists and leaders, that can be from comedians. Anybody that is just authentic and 
and being living their authentic truth, at least from from my perspective, from what I and my from what I can tell, uh, that inspires me, man. That inspires me and it pushes yeah, me to greatness. Like today I saw a post that was talking about 50 Cent and Remy Martin were settling some type of a, a disagreement that they had, some kind of court dispute that they had. And 50 Cent was was uh, joyous about it. And I'm going to tell you, man, I'm so inspired by 50 Cent. Yeah. I'm so inspired by him because he has built a a film studio. He has built a bona fide film studio. Man. He's got over 17 shows on the air. Right. He still has a rap career. He can jump on tour whenever he wants. He still sells merchandise, you know, for for his uh 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 G unit stuff. You know what I'm saying? And he does it with a smile on his face. He breaks every rule in the book. He uh, breaks yeah. every rule in the book when it comes to being politically correct and things you shouldn't say or do. And he's still winning. You winning. know why? Because he's authentic. That's right. Authenticity. Mm. You know? And I'm going to tell you, I did the show Power. Man, man. Uh, two years ago. I was on, not Power, but uh, it was uh, Power Book 2. That's right. And so uh, I wasn't available for Power because I was under an NBC deal at the time. But Power Book 2, I was finally able to work with Courtney, who... Her and I are are mutual fans of each other's work. I love uh, how yeah. she writes. Uh huh. Um, she was the showrunner for Power and the creator for Power. Uh, and I'm gonna tell you, when we would have cast table reads over Zoom because it was still COVID at the time, uh -huh. Fifty Cent was at every single table read. Wow, present. Now he's in other shows on the air. Yeah, and he's busy. He didn't have to be at the table read. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to be. That's the showrunner's job. But that's how committed he was. He was at every single table read Man. for Power Book 2. And I'm sure he does that for every single show that he mm -hmm. has. When I saw him pop up in that room, bro, for the table read, that he, was, he wasn't even on the show. He was just sitting there listening. And he huh. said a few words in the beginning and a few words at the end. I was blown away. I said, this is why he's successful. Man. Because he is invested. Mm -hmm. He ain't letting he ain't letting no stone, he's not leaving any stone unturned. Sure. He's gonna be there. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not I'm not doing a 50 cent commercial right now. No. But I'm just saying when you ask me like oh, how I'm inspired, little things like that inspire me. I love it that. It lets me know you ain't never too big. You ain't never too big. Never too big. No, to I love that. A small thing that you did to get to where you are now. Keep doing the small things. Don't change nothing now. Well, you know, again, you, you've always been a consistent individual. And I think back to one of the things you said in the beginning of, you've made the analogy of building a foundation, right? And a home. And you said it starts brick by brick. And for 50, the, the behavior that you saw within 50 was, was just that. Even though he has all this success and doing all these amazing things, he's still building it brick by brick. So if I need to sit in each one of these sessions, I'm going to sit in each one of these sessions to ensure that it's a reflection of the output that we are looking to put out. And he's going to be a part of that. So I could see why it resonates with you so much because it validates all the, the, the foundational principles in you of you're going to do the work and you're going to do it 100%. brick by brick by brick. And I think that's a great segue. You know, we, we close these sessions with this question where we talk about what are the three seeds you want to leave to the stewards of culture moving forward. And I'd love for you, though, to put it in the context of manifestation, because if I haven't said it enough, Laz, man, um, I love you like a brother, bro. Um, I've respected you, love you too, brother. like a brother for all the right reasons. And this manifestation thing that I saw in you you, you, you gave me my flowers and I thank you. Part of that was because I saw you do it the way in which you did it with Ritty Bro. And I couldn't look at myself and not think that I can't move, I gotta move forward with that type of intention. 
with that yes. type of intention. So with that, that energy that you shared and poured into me, I would love for you to just pour into anyone who's listening and watching this from a three seed standpoint of manifestation. What are these, those three things that you would leave? Um, uh, I would say, uh, whatever is in your heart, burning in your heart day and night, that is what you need to be honest and authentic with, uh, Once you have identified what that burning desire it is that you have. Um, so first, start with, with the burning desire. Yeah. It has to be authentically in your soul, in your spirit, in every cell of your body, in your DNA. It can't be because that person did it and they're successful or that person's doing it and they look like they're having a good time and they look like they're living a good life. No. It has to be something that you truly, truly, truly can't see yourself happy. Without it. Unless you make a move and without yeah, it, yeah. right. Then secondly, start building the foundation for success. Mm -hmm. And that means take whatever class you got to take, listen to whatever podcast. We have, there's so much available now. Mm -hmm. To do your deep dives and your learning. You can learn so much on YouTube University. That's right. That's right. I spend hours, hours researching. If you gotta take a night class or a night course, do it. I've done that too. I, I've taken production, I've taken TV production classes Man, that... with students at UCLA. And, uh, and, and and I can tell they recognize who the hell I am. It's funny because, like, the teacher will be trying to pronounce my right. name and the students will correct them, like, Laz no, Alonzo. No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I go in with my government right. name and they'll be like, He's not oh, no, it's Laz Alonzo, you know? I, I was in one TV production class, asked her, and she started talking about the boys and she was breaking down the different characters. She had no idea I was on You're the joking. show. That I was mother. You're joking. <laughs> You're joking. I no idea. And she's breaking down the show and the whole class is busting out laughing. And she's like, why is everyone laughing? Why is everyone laughing? And everybody's on mute, like hilarious. Not just sitting there like this. That's the dance. That is the <laughs> and she's dance. breaking down my character. Who is this? All of it. it was funny. But anyway, um, do whatever it takes to make sure that when you do launch, you launch. Right there. You don't experience failure to launch because of failure of preparation. Man. You need to prepare to succeed. Man. And everything that you need to do before you launch, do it. That doesn't mean hold up your launch because sometimes we can over-prepare or suffer from, uh, uh, I, I say, I, I have this term, uh, uh, analysis paralysis. That's right. Where you just feel like you're never ready and you never get started. No, sometimes you just got to get started and, and go, go. And, and learn on the way. But uh, what? But you still learn. But you still That's learn. Right. You still learn on the way. You never stop learning. You never stop asking. You never stop researching. You never stop searching, looking for other ways, other ideas. You know how to how to monetize X Y Z. How how this person monetize it. How that? There's so many different ways. And then last but not least, when you've truly authentically connected with what you want to do and you've truly put in sweat equity and possibly even some monetary mm -hmm. equity into building what you need to do. For some people, it might be building a website, you know, getting their Shopify ready, investing in merchandise that they want to sell, designing clothes, whatever, whatever that, may that may be. Then the next thing is truly believing in your product, standing 10 toes Damn. down and being willing to be criticized and ridiculed and not believed in. Sometimes those by closest, those closest to you. Fair, fair. Sometimes those are the people that ain't going to see your vision until okay. they see your vision. Fair. And it's okay. But, but, but when you get to that third, uh, that third place, that third seed that, that you asked me to give fair, you fair. three, 
you have already built something. You've built a confidence because one, you built the confidence in your in yourself and in your desire. You know you're doing the right thing because you've authentically connected mm -hmm. with it. Two, you've done so much homework that, listen, I may not know it all, but I know a significant amount. So I'm not going out there scared and timid and, oh, uh, should I do this? Should I do? Uh, no, I I've done a significant amount of homework to be where I am now. And three, you launch. You launch. And when you launch, it's like you, eh? When you when you shoot that three, because I, I listen, can shoot. you can <laughs> shoot. You can shoot. You know what I'm saying? But you shoot. And when you shoot, you know, you know, you're going to make right. it. You know you're going to make it. You never shoot the ball with the face of, I might miss. That's right. I've never seen you. You look more surprised when you do That's miss right. than anything else. Because you knew you were going to make that shot. It's like me when I go up for 20 rebounds. <laughs> I knew you were going to get back to the I know I'm going to get the ball. <laughs> Listen, bro. I, I know ain't nobody on that court going to get more rebounds than me that day. <laughs> nobody. Listen, man. And I dare you to stand in my way and try to Listen, stop. If nothing else, if people are hearing and feeling the culture of manifestation at its finest right now with this dude in rebound, this <laughs> man, I can't thank you enough. The ground not on the rebound, baby. I cannot thank you enough for this. I can't thank you enough, more importantly, for being the the human that you are, the the child of God that you are the vessel of purpose that you are and the amazing work in progress that you are, which we all are, but you are a great, great example for so many. I'm so glad that I was able to share some of what I've been exposed to for way over 25 years of nothing but this greatness. And I'm looking to share this with many, many more because I think what you are offering is a key to help unlock the greatness in a number of other people. And with that, of you and I thank you, bro. Thank you so much for having me. And I just want to say one thing before I go. I'm so happy you're doing this. Because this is a skill. This is a talent. This is a blessing that you've had for a very long time. Man. And you've been, for the last 20 years of your career, you've been building everybody else's Man. dream very successfully on a very high level. Now it's time for the world to see yeah. your dreams. So I'm happy that you're doing this. It's time for you yeah. to shine. And you couldn't have picked a better platform for the world to get to know how special of a human being you are. I thank you. So get ready, world. <laughs> a is coming. AC is coming. Oh, man, I love you. Thank you, bro. Can't be thank stopped. you, bro. Thank you, bro. Love you too, brother. All right, man. <laughs>